I'm a, I'm a maximalist. So I love, love to see things be like a lot of things. That does a lot of things, but like things that bring inspiration and joy to me. Cause that in turn also drives me to want to create. Welcome to the creative experience. Today we're here with Brintage. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so I'm a Kenyan American first set artist. Um, I dabble in every day, set design, tier design, photography. Uh, I over here <laughs> with this enough, but creative directing, literally anything you could think of. I probably like dabble just to see what's up in. Um, I like to explore different topics, mainly particularly like black subjects or people of color, a different marginalized groups. And um, I'm a Taurus. <laughs> okay. And yeah, that's, that's really me. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like it. So how did you get started with your artistic journey and what should we know about you? Okay. So with my artistic journey, I know as a kid, I was always a creative being. So whether it was coloring on the walls, coloring books, painting, drawing, literally writing. I was into it. I love the concept of it. Obsessed with literally watching different films or even like like scrolling through different magazines, no matter what it was, because I was like, this is amazing. Like, I want to do that. And I don't even know what it is, but I just want to do that as a kid. I knew that. And like being able as I got older to have like access to like opportunities like a photography class at 14, I was like, oh, I want to see what that is. And having such a passion, like strong passion for it, even though I don't know what I'm doing. But my mom seeing that and being like, you know what? I need you. And, you know, that means a lot. It's like an African mother, especially a single mom, who's like the typical way, like, no, like you should be focusing on like, like sports or like like scholarly stuff or, you know, something that's going to help you like get into like a school and become a lawyer, a doctor, a nurse. But like, I just was never that. I was with the black sheep. So she was like, I guess, I guess. It looks too bad in you. And ever since then, like, I've been into the photography for the past maybe six years now, five, six years, and it's grown so much as I grow as well. So, yeah. No good. Okay. Do you explore any other other mediums other than photography? Like, For sure. So, I've been doing graphic design since I was about 12, and that was just for fun because I used to, like, write little stories online, and I'll go on, like, to, like, Pixar and stuff and, like, make little covers and be like, yeah, I want to write a book just because this cover is cute. And that uh, I've always been into mixed media as a kid because, like, it was always encouraged in terms of, like, oh, um, elementary school, like, curriculum. They're like, let's explore different things. But I always found joy in it compared to just having to do something, like, one-dimensional, like, crayons and colored pencils. I was like, no, I like the fact that I can build something off of that and, and make use different types of, like, mediums, tools, and objects just to create this piece. So that kind of, like goes into my graphic design and how I sometimes will edit things or create different concepts for it. But that interior and set design kind of go hand in hand. I've always loved, um, I'm a, I'm a maximalist. So I love, love to see things be like a lot of things. That does a lot of things, but like things that bring inspiration and joy to me. Cause that in turn also drives me to want to create. So being able to even create my own spaces that like goes back to like my childhood always like again scrolling through these magazines and seeing all these different set designs or, like for shoots or like just ad placements and just like this looks like a different world. I'm in love with that. I like that. And even when I was a kid playing with like Barbies, I would like literally I learned how to sew and make their little dresses and that was just by hand. And then I had learned how to build like actual little sets for my dolls. And they looked really realistic, really good. And I was like, you know what? That wasn't bad for me then. Yeah. And that built that interest as I got older into wanting to explore that, whether it was in my own personal space and even for my friends or even like with my mom when she had like bought a house a few years ago, I literally helped her decorate that because I was like, this is not just home, but like a safe space. And I want that to reflect us as a whole. So I think just me dabbling in everything really just goes all across the board. Like I don't. I'm not shy for anything, like, even if it's intimidating, like, I, I'm, in the most simplest way, I do not sew. I don't sew on the side, very rarely. But I learned how to do that just because I was really intrigued by that and, like, the concepts of, like, oh, I'd really like to create this or have this in mind. It's not necessarily accessible to buy, but I want to make it because I love the idea of that. 
or just being able to know like the most random and things about like film or like I have friends who produce and DJ and just being able to like take notes from that and just being like, oh, that's something interesting I would probably want to dabble in. Not necessarily to do, but to add to my photography or like the cinematography aspects I hope to like dwell into one day. But yeah. Okay. I like that. I like that. So being like first generation, how do you think that that affects the way that you like function as a person and as a creative? So the way I function as a creative and as a person altogether, being first gen feels like, I know it sounds really good as like the best of both worlds because of like, I know a lot of people in diaspora don't have that knowledge of where they come from. And thankfully I do. I have a strong sense and culture behind me. And you no, know, that of course comes with its own pros and cons, but it's the most beautiful thing because I feel like I can hear that intricacy into my artwork. Like I even know like simply like I hooked in textiles, like canyons, they inspire me in my own graphic design and my own patterns, even in my own set design, interior design, all that, because it's so maximalist. It's so extravagant. I'm like, that's me. I love that. And I think also just growing up here and having like, again, the cultural differences of being Kenyan and then being here and like the culture of black people have over here is so similar, but it's still its own different identity and being able to grow up with that and having like a former stepdad who was like also like of like, you know, slave descendants. It's like he has that deep Southern culture in him. And he was like, this is how you grow up. And this is your Kenyan life. So be able to merge those two. I feel like it made me have this interest to always want to like connect the whole diaspora. Like, cause from black people here to South America, Africa, to Europe, wherever in the world, like we all are all interconnected no matter what culture we have going on. You know, we all come from the same place at the end of the day. It's just that, you know, with colonialism and slavery, it changed it up. And I think that duality is in me as a person made me like correlate that in my work and wanting to have that interconnectivity especially like when it comes to black women and black queer people and like marginalized the people of color so yeah okay okay so like moving forward with your career as you've already been like doing projects like conceptual projects branded projects and different things like that so like what do you want to do moving forward what's your ideal career path Honestly, my idea of career path, I've always like said this. I know it sounds really corny, but like I just want to do everything. Like I just I don't want to like look back like 10, 20 years or 30 years and be like, oh, I just stuck to this like regular nine to five or I just stuck to this one job for like 40 years and like it wasn't fulfilling. Like I want to do what I love, but I don't want to limit myself. Like whether it's just photography, I don't want to solely just do photography. Maybe one day I can sit here and direct a film or maybe write a play and maybe even direct a ballet because it's true. Solange did that. Make my own, like, I don't know, bring her to set line with Ikea or so shit. Like, I just, I want to do any, every and anything really, just as long as it's like inspiring me and driving me to do more and also bettering me and fulfilling me. And we well, making money, of course. But exactly. I think that's what I aspire in the future. But as for right now, I think just creating consistency and stability in my artwork because, you know, life gets in the way. So sometimes it gets hard to be consistent as an artist, especially freelance. But I think to, like, stabilize that, I feel like I'll be good. If you wanted to leave our viewers with something, like closing statements or something, what would you say to everybody? Um, honestly, I know it sounds really corny, but, like, and I know I keep saying that, but it's because it's, like, such the most cliche things that are really, really true. That's why they're cliches. But honestly, everything is temporary in terms of like you know adversities in terms of like situations or things that are like like withholding us from being where we want to be like whether it's house situations financial situations jobs xyz money like those things are superficial you know they're only in the physical world they can only like last so long because once those things surpass like because again everything's temporary like you'll be able to move forward to what you need to do in life and honestly, that always keeps me going when I feel like I'm down, like no matter what it is. I'm like, it's okay. This is temporary. Exactly. All right. I like that. Thank you. Thank, thank you for being a guest on the show. Thank you for having me. And thank you guys for watching The Creative Experience.